Uh, welcome to the Steam Generating Heat Pumps webinar 2024, organized by OST, by the Eastern Switzerland University of Applied Science. My name is uh, Gordin Arpagaus. I'm a senior researcher at the Institute for Energy Systems. Um, so first, some explanations of today's webinar. Uh, I go through the agenda quickly. We have uh, recording topics, some introduction. I will give you uh, some info about projects at our institutes on steam generating heat pumps and uh, some research info, the agenda and question and answers. So this is uh, our agenda for today. We have a very comprehensive uh, agenda with uh, eight uh, speakers from different countries. Uh, so we go to these uh, presentations one by one. We have uh, a break at around uh, three o'clock and then a final wrap up at the end. So the webinar recordings will be available on our YouTube channel. Here is the link and um, also uh, the website link. So this is all about uh, the sweet decarb. Um, CH project, which is about decarbonization of, and of cooling and heating in Switzerland. And uh, this is organized through this project. The mission statement of that project is to facilitate and uh, speed up and de-risk decarbonization of heating and cooling. And um, if you like, uh, please follow us on LinkedIn, uh, which you see a link uh, here also on the slide. So where are, where are we? Uh, we are at the eastern, in the eastern part of Switzerland. Uh, you see here uh, the map of Switzerland. And here we have the campus of OST with our Institute of Energy Systems. And here you have also the heat pump test center, which is um, a accredited center for testing heat pumps under controlled conditions. Our institute, we have different competences. Our slogan is engineering at net zero future that works. And we have different fields. One um, which is in industrial sector is with industrial heat pumps. We do energy analysis, efficiency optimization. But then we have uh, ac activities in residential uh, sector for heat pumps um, here uh, in, for example, control, the test center, the different technologies, and also field tests. And others if, of our group are active in the mobility sector, for example, for uh, electrical charging of um, cars or some power electronics, or we have energy supply as another competence with decentralized energy supply and uh, electrical grids and also photovoltaics. So we have done uh, several webinar recordings in the last uh, years. They are all available on YouTube. And last year we especially organized the first steam generating heat pump webinar with about 70 participants. And it was a success. So that was the reason that we will um, uh, do it again this year. And it's really a... Um, crazy. Um, it seems uh, crazy. We have uh, more than 540 webinar registrations for today from over 42 countries. And these have and you as a participant have different backgrounds and functions. So we see here uh, the different countries. It's clear Switzerland. Uh, there are many uh, participants uh, today, but also Germany, the United States, France, Denmark, the Netherlands and so on here. Norway, we have a different uh, <laughs> and very interesting participants here today. And the functions, you see researchers may, mainly, but also sales engineers, process engineers, also some decision, dis, uh, decisioning people like CTOs or CEOs, head offs, directors, and so on. So at our institute, we started steam generating heat pump research um, some years ago. And here we have a, a picture of a first prototype for steam generation, where we used a cycle to um, generate low pressure stream and uh, prove the concept. 
Now we have other uh, projects uh, with steam generating heat pumps. Here a picture of a butane um, heat pump cycle combined with a second stage vapor recompression turbo compressor. Uh, and this is a project uh, between two universities, uh, EPFL in Lausanne or Neuchâtel and Ost at, in Bux. So the goal is here to produce steam low pressure steam with this combined cycle. In another um, setup, we tested um, several uh, synthetic refrigerants, especially the low GWP HFO uh, refrigerants that you can say, you see here. And here we have published quite some data in recent years. Now we are looking at heat pumps with refrigerant mixtures because um, mixtures have the opportunity to increase the efficiency of a high temperature or a heat pump with uh, fitting the temperature glide to the application. And this offers higher flexibility, which may decrease the investment costs, but also um, decrease the operating costs with higher uh, achievable efficiency. So what we're doing are experimental demonstration, but also finding out the most suitable refrigerant mixtures by modeling uh, that fits different applications. In another project, which is about steam generating heat pumps integration, we have developed a guideline for integrating such heat pumps. And uh, this has been published also recently and available on our website um, to, yeah, to download. In another project, which is more Swiss um, oriented, we are participating in the IEA Annex 58 project with a Swiss team, which consists of us and an EPFL, Hike and CSD engineer. And we have several industrial partners that provide us with some case studies for heat pump integration in industrial processes. Last but not least, we are also participating in a European funded project called Push to Heat, where we are analyzing four different technologies for high temperature heat, uh, heat upgrading. So first, uh, an absorption heat transformer from BS Nova, then a cascade heat pump with piston and screw compressors from, from a sustainable process heat, then a two-stage centrifugal compressor from Entertime, and a thermochemical heat transformer from Q-Pinch. So we have seen that the research is emerging for steam generating heat pumps and also on the market we have more and more products. Um, we have established um, a list of products uh, 2018 and these were about 25 heat, high temperature heat pump products that provided 90 degree supply temperature. And now today we have about 50 such products which provide more than 100 degrees. So you can see um, the number of uh, suppliers and products emerged and um, it's almost double, doubled in, in about five or six years. So when we are going to produce steam, we also have to consider the, the refrigerant or the working fluid. And here is a list of suitable refrigerants. And when we want to generate, for example, two bar steam, then uh, we have some refrigerants that can do it or that are able to, to use. Some others uh, for four bar steam or six bar steam. So it means we have to select a, a proper uh, refrigerant to condense uh, the refrigerant and transfer the heat to evaporate the water. We have natural refrigerants and synthetics in this list. Um, I have also this slide, um, which is a, a graph on the COP that could be expected from steam generating heat pumps. It's, a, it's an overview of some studies uh, published in the literature, but also some uh, values from suppliers. And um, yeah, we have here a fit function that could be used as a first guess um, uh, to evaluate the COP. 
last but not least, um, there is um, potential for decarbonizing process heat. Here you have an overview from the European market, uh, the industrial process heat as a function of the process heat temperature. And when we go to higher temperatures here, we have a higher um, amount of process heat to, yeah, to decarbonize. In this study, uh, we could uh, we can estimate that around 4,000 and so uh, heat pumps of three megawatt would be a potential in the European market. So the highest potential in the food, paper and chemical sectors and waste heat is available uh, in this range between 40 to 100, uh, which would be sufficient. In the US market, we have here another cumulative the cumulative um, estimate curve and we can say that almost half of all industrial process heat is below 200 degrees and therefore suitable for heat pumps. Uh, between below 300 degrees it's almost 73 uh, percent. But there is still a lack of installed heat pumps in industry and here are possible reasons especially challenging are the economics which have been identified as a key market barrier. So fuel prices are low and uh, capex may be high and expected uh, payback periods need to be short. So these are factors that we cannot influence by let's say by research but this is a market um, a market influence. What we can change or optimize is product acceptance and also increase the knowledge about heat pumps. This is what we are doing today with this webinar and we, yeah, we help to yeah, uh, ad adopt this technology more into the market. I want to wrap up a little bit um, and this is uh, actually my view but <laughs> I try to summarize. So Dennis uh, Roskos from ETH in Zurich, he showed that model-based analysis um, uh, and then he, he, he said that uh, the high temperature and high efficient heat pumps could cover the base load and there are various types of steam generating heat pumps for like direct evaporation, flash evaporation, MVR, and depending on the technology, one or the other is should be used. Christian Schleminger and Michael Bandle from Aneo Industry showed a demonstration of an integration of a heat pump, of a steam generating heat pump that produces around 1.6 megawatt in a feed production. It uses ammonia and water as refrigerants, all natural refrigerants, and the combined heat pump with these two stages generates two tons of steam per hour, two bar, absolute 140 degrees steam. Konrad and Manuel from Atlas Copco showed their product portfolio and how they would transform their air compressor technology to steam compression using existing technology and they're using oil-free and air-free uh, technology to produce uh, steam and they will use uh, high-speed uh, controlled oil-free screw compression for doing that. Martin from DTU showed tests with the Japanese Kobelco steam gross heat pump 165 which has a, a flash tank in the cycle and a, sec, as a, and a steam compressor on the top cycle. And he showed that um, this system is actually able to be changed to other refrigerants. So today they have R245FA, but he showed that some other HFOs and also hydrocarbons could be used as drop-in replacements, which is a, a good sign. So that uh, the heat pump was tested up to 175 degrees and he could uh, then generate uh, some model 
uh, based on efficiency data gained from the experiments. So the flash tank temperature was really uh, or is uh, an optimization variable or parameter to optimize the performance of the heat pump. Then there was Wouter from TNO. He showed a pentane heat pump from Mayakawa. He showed that this is demonstrated at full scale um, to produce steam of uh, above 140 degrees in the Carno lab in the Netherlands. So the pentane heat pump uses an economizer cycle and internal heat exchanger. And the first test results were presented here. Um, so there are some there is some room for, room for improvement, but uh, the works are going on to really commercialize then this uh, project product. Then there was Mogens from Wheel and Sandvik. He presented the, the challenges, or let's say, to design and yeah, uh, uh, turbo compressors which are, have high speed high speed driven turbo compressors to have uh, compact turbo compressors with high isentropic efficiency. So far they have gained some experience from tests, 200 operating hours, 50 starts with one of these prototypes, but there are future and further projects going on within this company and uh, they are aiming a new compressor family with one, two and three stage compression, which would lead them to even higher temperature lifts up to 80, 83 Kelvin. And then there was Hans. Hans gave a very nice overview of the different steam compressor types which are available, which are commercially available at TRL9, like centrifugal, piston screw, roots, turbo vans. They are there and commercialized with uh, very large capacities as well. And then he also showed uh, some other developments, uh, new developments of uh, steam compressors. Uh, like the direct driven turbo compressors, screw compressors, rotary vane or, or screw compressors. And finally there was Arne. Arne presented his uh, Sterling high temperature heat pump, the Höck temp for decarbonizing uh, the industry. It is a very uh, flexible heat pump that can achieve very high temperature lifts and also is very flexible in heat, um, uh, the heat, heat source and heat sink temperature. So uh, helium is used as a refrigerant, which is a noble gas and has uh, favorable environmental um, properties. So he showed several installations and uh, yeah, and I learned that uh, this Sterling heat pump is also suitable for low glide um, applications for steam generation. So we are at the end of this webinar. Uh, 